Jason Verdelli with Phase Two Solutions. And today I wanna to talk about how to choose the right digital marketing vendors for your particular business. Um, at the end of the day, you have particular business objectives. You have, whether that's you know increased revenue, maybe it's op creating operational efficiencies, saving time, uh, maybe looking at increasing morale inside of the company. At the end of the day, again, there's a lot of different types of business objectives that you have. But ultimately, what we want to do is we want to make sure we're lining up with organizations that are in the digital media space uh, that can can help us and can identify you know what our business objectives are and really help us achieve those. So, and this is something I know you know after work you know working with companies for years. Um, in, in helping to deliver strategies for companies through phase two solutions. Uh, these are some of the points that are really, really critical to establish now uh, versus looking at this three years down the road and saying, man, why the heck did I choose that company? Or why the heck, you know, I'm not really seeing any kind of results from anything we're doing digitally. You know, why the heck is that, is that happening? So uh, there's two main points I want to just talk about today. Uh, the first uh, thing you want to do in choosing the right vendor is first, you have your own homework assignment, which is really to identify your purpose. So before you start going out, and this is something that we handle for you, but even when you're talking with us, you know, you want to first identify one is your mission. So, you know, exactly, you know, why are you in business? I mean, that's a real simple statement. Um, again, this, you don't have to worry about saying our mission is to make a million dollars. No, your mission is not to make a million dollars. Your mission is to do something, uh, you know, maybe it's greater in the world. Maybe it's to help certain people. Uh, that is your mission. That's what's going to drive a lot of the decisions that you make going forward. Um, so I want you to think about that, your, your mission, your objectives. Uh, so start thinking about specific things that you're trying to accomplish. You know, maybe that's increased customer service. Maybe it's increased sales. Maybe it's, again, that operational uh, efficiencies. When you're looking at just objectives here, you don't have to necessarily be specific. You just want to think very high level. You know, what are we, what are we trying to accomplish? The uh, third thing I want to think about is the key, uh, key performance indicators. Now, or KPIs. This is really when you get when uh, you get down to the details. So you know exactly how many leads are you, how many or how much money more more money are you trying to make, or you know how many more leads do you need to uh, to get in order to make that happen, or you know how many uh, you know uh, or what is you know what is an acceptable you know customer service rating for your organization, and how do we get there? Um, so your key performance indicators essentially are going to be the things that you're going to be measuring. Um, against your digital marketing strategy. So against that uh, social media strategy, against that uh, search engine optimization strategy, against how effective your website is at converting uh, visitors, maybe into customers or stakeholders. Um, so again, we want to identify the specific numbers. So again, if you're not writing anything down that can't be measured, then it's not a KPI. The uh, fourth thing I want you to think about is determining your time frame. So think about how fast you're looking to achieve these particular KPIs. So, you know, is it in a month? Is it in six months? Uh, you know, six months. And one thing I want you to keep in mind here is that obviously, you know, if you're trying, if you're saying, hey, we, we need to make a million dollars and you're looking to do that next month, obviously that's going to uh, somewhat, uh, you know, affect your budget um, in terms of, you know, um, uh, how, you know, in choosing particular uh, digital marketing vendors that can make that happen. So um, again, I want you to think about a couple of these things, you know, before actually, you know, moving forward and really in anything, um, even before calling us at phase two solutions, one of the things that we're, you know, one of our, you know, business advisors is going to ask you is, you know, really, have you thought, do you, you know, do you have these established? Do you have your mission in place? Do you have what you're trying to measure? These are things that we can help you establish in initially, but before taking the next step and actually executing the strategy, we have to have these factors in place. So the next thing I want to uh, talk about is you know how to choose those how to choose the right vendor. And this this is a, a part. Of, these are some points here that that we take into consideration in choosing to make or choosing the vendors that will actually execute the strategy that we uh, set out here for you. The first thing I want you to think about is, or the first thing we want to look at is the history of the vendor. Um, really, uh, how relevant that history of their the vendor's uh, execution is um, in your particular industry. So looking at, if we're looking at, say, a website development vendor, we want to look at organizations that have some experience um, in developing, say, websites for uh, your particular industry. The reason why this is key is because, again, there's certain 
uh, aspects or certain parts in any, just about any industry uh, that are unique to that industry. Maybe there are particular blogs in the industry that, you know, when it comes down to choosing the right marketing vendor, uh, there's it might be blogs in that industry that, uh, you know, a, a new company coming in might not even know about or may take them a while to, to find that. Um, so now you're paying for that research and you're paying for additional th- additional time to try to figure out um, items that, you know, again, a company that already has experience can sort of identify already. Um, and ultimately, we want uh, they're going to know exactly or have a good idea uh, as to what we're working towards. So, you know, because, uh, again, if there's uh, if you're in a particular industry, typically there are, you know, your business objectives are very similar. Um, so. Uh, they're going to have they're going to be a little bit uh, more sensitive to that, which is really really cr- uh, crucial when it comes down to accountability. The second thing I want you to think about is the making sure that the areas of service are actually in line with your uh, business objectives. So this is really what, when we talk about this, we talk about um, you know you know if we're choosing a, a mobile vendor, you know is it is a mobile app or a mobile uh, strategy really is that going to help you achieve your uh, business objectives uh, right now. So, but again, uh, you might need that mobile app first before before you even you know need to focus on your your social media marketing. Uh, there's certain uh, parts of your digital marketing strategy uh, that need to be taken care of first before implementing the others. Again, getting a great website up and running, uh, or if you're looking to you know convert leads, we want to make sure we focus on that. Uh, before actually maybe getting into a social media marketing strategy. Again, you could try to do both or do one at the same, you know, do both at the same time, but um, ultimately it's going to come down to focus and budget. So we want to make sure at least uh, the vendors that we choose uh, are, again, uh, the types of vendors are in line with our strategy. Uh, Workflow, we want to look at exactly, you know, how do they interact? Do they have a project management system? Do they have... Uh, phone access? Are they proactive at reaching out? Um, you know, essentially, how do they communicate? We want to make sure that's in line with what your expectations are. So if you're not an email person, you know, and they're only going to be responding to you via email, or they only respond to you at like seven o'clock at night, then uh, that's not, that's going to be a, a mismatch. It's going to make the experience ultimately, um, you know, not fun. <laughs> and ultimately, it's just going to be, you know, become a lot more work on your end in order to make that uh, relationship work. So uh, the other thing we want to look at is, you know, do they offer reporting mechanisms that are in line with your business objectives? So uh, this is really key. I see a lot in search engine optimization vendors where, you know, they provide reports, but it's, you know, typically it's like Google Analytics or some sort of analytics package that's telling, you know, how many visitors that you get to the website or, you know, uh, where they're coming from, links, you know, here's the amount of links you have from social media. Um, so for, and again, the, the list goes on and on of what they could be measuring. But ultimately, you want to make sure that the reporting mechanisms are directly in line with those KPIs that I talked about. So, um, you know, if you're looking at a search engine optimization vendor, we want to make sure that they're providing reporting, say, on not just how many people visited your website and where they came from, but, you know, how many people came from this particular link that filled out your lead form or gave you a phone call. That's exactly what we want to look for um, in, in our vendor. That's a kind of report you can go back to your partners in an organization. You can even just look at yourself and say, huh, okay, the amount of money I'm making right now is worth it because, you know, look, the, this is exactly where their service uh, has produced particular results. Um, so, again, we want, to, we want to be sensitive to that. Uh, the other thing, uh, lastly, what we want to also, lastly, what we want to look at here, uh, there's actually a lot of different things we want to look at, but uh, just a couple of this the last point here is uh, how do they collaborate with other vendors? So this is really key because if you have if you hire a, a company to do your website, you want to make sure that co- that company is going to be collaborative. You know, maybe say we, with a social media company uh, or social media management company. Sometimes those companies are the, they offer the uh, same services. But you want to make sure that uh, at least they, you know, they're, they're open to collaboration, that uh, you, know, you don't have to always serve as the middleman between you know, your website company and maybe an email marketing company or a company that needs to come in and, and write blog posts for you and, and so forth. So we want to make sure that they're open to that. Um, and the last thing I'll just talk about today is budget. Uh, so this is, of course, on everybody's mind is, you know, what, you know, we want to make sure we're choosing the right company that not only can deliver and, and, and to have the qualities of what we just talked about, but, you know, is that company going to deliver within, you know, a time, scope and budget of what we're looking at? 
Um, again, there's a lot of great companies out there that can get you to where you need to go, but it might cost you $100,000 or a million dollars to do it. Who knows? Uh, and and it, it, there's, it, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with spending that kind of money. Um, if the results are there and, 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 and if it's the right vendor, then it can be worth it. But at the end of the day, you have to look at it and say, you know, what is my budget? You know, and, you know, what essentially, you know, what is a return on for me? If I, if I get a conversion, you know, what is that? You know, don't want to be spending, you know, $10,000 a month to, for your social media strategy if you're, you know, selling, you know, $3 products. Um, and, you know, again, you're looking at only selling, you know, say 100 of those every single month or whatever. Hopefully you make a little bit more money than that. But, um, but the point is you want to make sure that, again, you're, you're choosing a vendor that can be a little bit sensitive to, um, it, to your budget. Also be willing to grow with you. So as you, maybe they can start smaller uh, and then expand services uh, through time, uh, these are some things that we want to we want to look at because again, budget is just a reality at the end of the day. So again, hopefully this has uh, been helpful. Again, we want to look at our purpose, identify that. Then we want to look at some of the factors here in choosing the right vendor. Uh, ultimately, it comes down to you know again just having the time and, and focus to do it. I mean, it comes down to writing this out on a sheet of paper and um, you know making things happen. This is something that we can help you out with at Phase 2 Solutions. Of course, um, we'll set, it, set you up with a, a strong business advisor that will help you answer a lot of these questions, um, really identify you know, what is your purpose, what are your business objectives, and then really designing a strategy and working with vendors to make sure that we're moving in the right direction. This is exactly what we do. Um, so again, we'd be glad to help you out with that. So with that said, uh, stay tuned with the, uh, for the next video here and uh, have a great rest of your day.